I'd like to call this Ways and Means Committee meeting of Tuesday, September 6th to order. Roll call, please. Fox? Here. Radke? Here. Krieger? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Here. Here. Johnson? Here. 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 Or present. Great. Are there any changes to the agenda? Hearing none, is there a motion for approval of the agenda? So moved. Support? Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, is there a motion for approval of the minutes of August 9th? Then I'll do that also. Support. Thank you. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, at this time, um, is public input. Anyone wishing to speak to the commission, please oh, go man. to the podium. I'm Did I sorry. miss something? Minutes. Didn't we just do that? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Was that a test? Did I pass? You passed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone wishing to speak to the commission, please go to the podium. I think write your name and your address on the pad up there, and please keep your <coughs> comments to five minutes or less. All right. Seeing no one taking me up on my offer, we'll move on to petitions and communications. Um, the first item is the... Um, Assistant Corp uh, the VIBA Board of Trustees, the adoption of the amended VIBA Trust. Heather, could you speak yep. to that a little yes. bit? Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Heather Brady Pitcher. I'm the Assistant Corporation Counsel for Bay County. And with me today, I have um, Samantha Kopad. She's an attorney from Miller Canfield that's been assisting us with the VIBA amendment process. Um, we're here today to present the amended VIBA Trust to this committee. Um, the original VIBA was adopted in 2001, and its purpose is to prefund the retiree medical benefits. Um, last year, Commissioner Coonan asked about the status of the VIBA and whether employers could start using these funds to pay for retiree health care costs. Um, that spurred us to take a closer look at our 20-year-old trust document, um, and it was determined that the trust needed updating in order to bring it in compliance with Michigan and federal law. Um, the Viva Board um, decided to hire Ms. Kopez. Um, she's a specialist in this area and she has guided us through this amendment process, which has been um, a, little, a little more than we thought initially, but we're, we're, finally, we're finally here. So um, last month, the Viva Board voted to approve the Viva Trust and then refer it to this board. This board ultimately has the um, authority to adopt the, the Viva Trust. So the Viva Board has referred it and it's for this board to adopt. So um, Samantha's here if you have any questions um, and, and she's happy to answer any questions that you have. Mr. Cronin. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. <laughs> Assuming that we need to use this or want to use this at some point, is it uh, user friendly or are we going to have to bring you back to? <laughs> Well, the entire structure of the VIBA is actually quite complicated, um, not because of me, just because of the way it was set up with all of your different uh, adopting units, but I think it should be fairly user-friendly. We did consult with the actuary in developing um, the parameters for which the funds can be used. Uh, the bottom line is that if an employer account, and by employer account, we talk about the different ad adopting units and they have their, their own accounts, if that hits 60% uh, fun funded, then you can utilize those funds. Um, if it then drops below 50%, then you need to stop utilizing the funds. And the reason these funding percentages are important is because under Michigan law, uh, Public Act 202, if you drop below 40% funded, you have to go into corrective actions and start putting in additional funds into the VIVA. And so we're trying to avoid that and offer a uh, cushion. Um, we also have what we call a superfunded threshold, which is 120%, and when the um, particular employer account reaches that, um, the intent is that they should be utilizing those funds at that point unless they can provide um, the VIVA board with a compelling justification not to use it. Um, and that's all so that we don't have all this money sitting in the VIVA at 
its termination after all of the retirees have been paid out their benefits uh, because ultimately any money that sits in the VIVA at termination has to be used for another tax exempt purpose. Um, it's not something that can just revert to the county. Um, so we want to use as much of it as possible and then anything that's left over or and above that would then be used for another tax exempt purpose which could be for example paying for um, some of the premiums for employees active employee retirement or I'm sorry uh, health care costs so that's something way down the road but that's the rationale for wanting to uh, utilize those funds is so that we can maximize the funds that we already have saved um, while saving you know the cash flow for the county and it is adopting units so you're saying when the uh, last uh, employee who is uh, drawing from that for their post-employment health care is gone and there's money in there, it can be used for uh, active employees? Correct. Their health care costs, yep. When it, question, when it reaches the 120%, will it automatically kick in or does someone have to initiate that? To start the, using the FIBA it. board, I believe, would be initiating that and bringing it up to that particular um, adopting unit, um, but because you'd want to sign off from the adopting unit as well. And likewise, at the fifty percent, it's the same scenario. The sixty percent, or the sixty percent, the same, is the same scenario as well. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Bikic? I know we've had this number before. What, what board are we at right now? What's our number? Uh, each of the different components have a few different ones. Do you happen to have that? Those numbers? I think our total today is at 80 million. 80 million is our funded level and or our um, at total assets. Um, two of the entities are well above the threshold. Behavioral health at 256% funded. Um, libraries at 147%. The road commission's only at 11.3 percent. Um, the sheriff's department's at 55 percent. Medical facilities at 46. DWS is at 76 percent, and the county as a whole is at 56 percent. So there's a very large range. Those are separate, so they can't be moved. Correct. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Am I? Did you? Okay. So if it's super funded, 120 percent, and then they have to use the money for those purposes. Is that two of those were at above that threshold, yep. Yeah. Correct. So, so yeah, so the, the goal would be that they would start utilizing it unless that particular adopting unit has a compelling reason why they should not, and that would go to the VIVA board um, for them to make a decision. Now let's say uh, mental health, uh, are they aware they're at 200? That's a lot. That's a high percentage, 200%. I, I believe that each of the component units are aware of that. So I would assume they're starting to use it. I'm going to find out. <clears throat> yeah, no, I mean, that's an unheard of number, funding percentage-wise. <laughs> so that, that was the behavioral, mental health, and uh, the library. Yes, are the two that are very overfunded. I bet you're going for more. Any other questions? I'll move it. Okay. Support. Moved and supported. Any other discussion or questions or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, moving on to probate judge. Um, the 2022-23 child care budget. So, um, support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, item B2, the Memorandum of Understanding for Day Treatment Program with Handy Middle School. So, support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item C, the uh, approval for the out-of-state travel for the National Association of Pretrial Services. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? Oh, yes, Mr. Craig. I do. So, uh, Shauna, if, you know, 
there are a number of times we'll we're asked for approval to send somebody to a conference and it's you know budgeted already or it's grant funded or you know I, I guess what I'd like to know is after this is all said and done and completed just what is the total number that it, that was the expense I, we never really find that out I'd like to maybe set a new precedent that after we do the approvals and it's done, we come back to the board just to give us a heads up on what the ex total expense was if we could. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Item D, the um, DCTV sponsorship agreement. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in Boo, Mr. Biggett. So the city used to be a part of this and the, and the schools. I don't know if we've thought about reaching out to them again if you know, their budgets have improved, but I think periodically we might want to ask them if they're willing to come back. I have a lot of people asking, you know, why are the schools on? Why is the city on? Just the county, so something to think about down the road. Thank you, Mr. Cooney. Those people need to go to those board meetings and ask that question. You know, if they get no pushback, they're not going to spend the money. But I think it's good uh, public policy for people to see what's going on and in government, local government. So we do it, and uh, I think everybody should do it. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, item E, the budget adjustment for food supplies at the Civic Arena. So moved. Support? Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item F, um, temporary funding for the phone system for 911. I'll move it. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Item G1, um, the approval for the 2022 tax rate request. So moved. Support? Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And then item G2, the waiver for the county certification level for the equalization director. I'll move it. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, item H, uh, approval of the Federal Transportation Planning Fund and Asset Management. Move it right along. Support. support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And then item H2, the um, update on the Gypsy Mouse Suppression Program. I'll move to receive. Support. All right. Jeremy, could you provide us a little update on that? Yes, I can. That'd be great. Hello, everybody. Hello to the familiar faces. Hello to those of you I don't know uh, that well. If you don't know me, uh, my name is Jeremy Lowell. I'm the program coordinator for the Bay County Gypsy Moth Suppression Program. I started as the assistant coordinator in 2018, and for about the last year and a half, I've been the program coordinator. Um, we just thought this would be a great time to give you guys a good update of what happened in our field season. Um, some really big things have happened in the world of Gypsy Moth, and we have some other big things kind of upcoming, so I just wanted to um, take a quick moment to inform you about them. Um, since 1989, our millage-funded program has been highly supported by um, all the local people of our area. Um, and we have worked diligently to basically stop the devastating effects of invasive species such as gypsy moth and the emerald ash borer. Um, in 2022, we saw some of the highest numbers of gypsy mouth population densities uh, that we've seen in the state of Michigan since the mid to uh, since the early to mid 1990s. Um, and through this, uh, we actually saw some of our highest treatment numbers since we've seen since that time. Um, on May 24, 2022, the program treated nearly 4,000 acres of infested woodlots in six different townships throughout Bay County to help control these rising populations. And after treatment, um, we saw through our 
post-treatment surveys that basically um, we saw a huge reduction in Caterpillar numbers and we saw a lot of pleased landowners, people that were very happy with the results, um, very happy that we were able to get on top of this where many counties in the state of Michigan are struggling to get on top of it where they're trying to play catch up where maybe they don't have programs anymore. Uh, so that was really nice to see. Um, in terms of what's coming up with Gypsy Moth, even though we had a very successful year and we believe uh, you know, having this very large treatment, we're not quite out of the woodwork yet. Uh, we are seeing new areas where populations are building um, and we look forward to kind of getting out there and working with those landowners this year. But uh, it's not just Bay County though, I do want to say the entire state of Michigan and even some of the places throughout the Midwest are seeing these increased numbers. Um, and this is um, probably one of the biggest Gypsy Moth eruptions that have happened since the late 1980s, early 1990s when some of you may remember hearing about them at first. Um, not only, our name does say Gypsy Moth, but we do uh, more than that, and uh, something that n not everyone may be so aware of, but uh, we actually um, treat publicly owned ash trees all throughout Bay County to protect them from the emerald ash borer. Um, if you've heard of the emerald ash borer, it was a devastating insect that was basically first found in Bay County in 2007, and as many of you know, basically wiped out our ash tree populations. Um, throughout almost the entire United States. Uh, ash trees are now considered critically endangered. And here in Bay County, our program since 2011 has uh, treated 3,000 of these publicly owned trees um, from these devastating effects. We've been able to keep them very healthy, keep them thriving. A lot of these trees end up in our schools and our streets along the public areas. Um, uh, this year specifically, um, in June of 2022, we treated nearly 1,000 ash trees. And this was in the public areas of Hampton Township. Um, one area I do want to highlight there is the Bay County Gulf golf course actually. Um, a lot of people don't realize that about 75% of the trees that make up the Bay County golf course are ash trees and if we didn't treat those trees all those trees would be gone and the golf course would look almost like a barren wasteland so we are pretty proud of that that we've been able to keep the golf course looking as good as it's been and we're really proud of the work that we've been able to do there. So um, also some more trees were treated in the southeast quarter of Bay City. Um, we actually do 3,000 trees overall but we rotate them a thousand trees per year um, but with that we're happy to say that we've been able to preserve these beautiful trees that were taken out by this invasive insect and they continue to thrive and grow. Um, so that's a little bit about the treatment update and then just one more big thing I really want to say um, is something about the program millage. Um, the program millage has always been highly supported by Bay, Bay County residents and has always passed by a large margin of voter approval. Um, the current millage is currently is it's actually expired um, and it will be on the November voting ballot so we just want to make sure folks know about that. So uh, yeah, that's a little bit about my update. I'd be happy to take any questions from there. I don't know how, who all knows so much about the program and stuff, but we'd be happy to take some questions. Mr. Greger. So obviously, Ms. Laura Olgar has done a great job with you, and I really appreciate your enthusiasm and the knowledge of the program, and we hope to see you more often letting Bay County know just what's going on and what they're getting for their money. Thank you very much. Yes, Laura has done a great job and um, we would, I, I, in the future, I think this would be great to give you guys more updates like this because yeah, sometimes we do feel like we are in the shadows and we would like to come out and let you guys know because uh, through Laura and our program and everything, we have done a lot of exciting things. So thank you very much for that comment. I really appreciate that. Mr. Vickick? Spotted lantern fly. Oh, you said it before I did. Look at you. <laughs> it's very pretty, pretty looking. It is. Um, so yeah, as Mr. Begick said, um, this is actually huge news. Uh, Spotted lanternfly started in Pennsylvania. It's another invasive insect that was brought from Asia. And it was discovered <laughs> of all times on my birthday. It was officially confirmed August 10th of this year. It was confirmed in Oakland County uh, for the first time. So this is big news. And this is right along the right along with gypsy moth and emerald ash borer. Um, this can be a devastating insect. And when it comes to Michigan, you think about our orchards, our cherry trees, you think about um, our nurseries, uh, all of these things, that is where spotter and lanternfly tends to attack the most in terms of uh, it, is a, it is what's called a, uh, a, a sap feeding insect. It will go in and basically suck the sap from all these important fruiting bodies. It creates this nasty residue called honeydew that it will leave all over the tree and it'll basically cause mold to grow on the tree. It also attracts flies, insects, things like that. And uh, in Pennsylvania where this first occurred, um, it actually completely wiped out portions of like their, uh, their orchard of their apple businesses, cherries, those types of things. So when you guys think of Michigan and you think of what's some of our most, you know, <laughs> our biggest festivals, you know, cherry festival, things like that, um, it is something we want to keep a very diligent eye on and it's something that um, early detection is going to be key and uh, right along kind of where our program is, um, that is something that we do believe in the future we'll be taking a big part of. So. Uh -huh. oh. 
Oh, Mr. yes. Okay. Yeah, I'd just like to add also with regard to Commissioner Krieger's comments, your, your enthusiasm is infectious, and we really, I want to thank Laura and your entire team there for all you do for Bay County, and also point out to those who may be in the viewing audience of Bay CTV that in the past, when we haven't had outbreaks of gypsy moth uh, yep. infestations, that the millage hasn't been levied if there's sufficient revenue in the program. So thank you for being frugal, and thank you for your optimistic uh, and, and enthusiastic approach to protecting our ecosystem in Bay County. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Barsha. You. We appreciate that. Anyone Thanks, else? Jeremy. I Thank you guys. Yeah. All right. I'll be back soon. This was fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That motion was moved and supported. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Item I-1, um, receive tuition reimbursements. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And seeking approval for budget adjustments for health insurance. Support. Moved and supported. Mr. Coonan. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I see we started with uh, 3.4 million in fund balance and, and um, you know, uh, what did we budget for that for this year? Obviously something less than 9.2 million. I mean, if you don't have that, maybe you guys can get it for us for the next, you know, full board meeting. The budget adjustment is going to add about $500,000, which should stop us from utilizing the fund balance if all stays consistent for the rest of the year. So I think we would be about $500,000 short. So we want to keep that 3.4 million in there as a buffer. Yes. And so, uh, our health care costs are about nine million dollars then, right? Correct. And then you're just going to um, get a uh, half a million dollar budget adjustment just to offset those increased costs from the budget. That's correct. All right. Thanks. Any other questions? No? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item J, General Fund Campbells. So moved. Support. Yeah, that'd be good. Spend All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item K1, receipt of the uh, General Fund equity. I'll move to receive. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And how about up, uh, update regarding Executive Director of 2007-11? Motion to receive? So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. In item K3A, seeking approval for the agreement to provide services and support to Essexville Public Safety. So I'll move it. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mo motion carried. And then um, seeking approval of a software services agreement. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And then lastly, uh, adjustment in the fund, seeking increase of the general fund balance for the budget stabilization arrangement. So support. <laughs> Moved and supported. That was a tongue twister. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Where are we going to go into discussion? Oh, we can talk about it. Sure. Never mind. I just had a couple questions. So um, this is the money that would go in to keep the 20% level of your rainy day fund, right? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that money, that when it, when it goes in, are there ways that it can be accessed if needed? Yes. Yes. Would you like to? Emergency. Would you like to? According to MCL 141444, there are four 
three, four ways. Uh, number one, to cover a general fund deficit when the municipality's annual audit reveals such a deficit. Two, to prevent a reduction in the level of public services or in the number of employees at any time in the fiscal year when the municipality's budgeted revenue is not being collected in an amount sufficient to cover budgeted expenses. Three, to prevent a reduction in the level of public services or in the number of employees when in preparing the budget for the next fiscal year, the municipality's estimated revenue does not appear sufficient to cover estimated expenses. And four, to cover expenses arising because of a natural disaster, including flood, fire, or tornado. However, if federal or state funds are received to offset appropriations from the fund, that money shall be returned to the fund. Okay. And when those funds go in, do they get, uh, they get invested in a different way than... They do not. They, that would all follow Public Act 20, and the treasurer would invest those funds as he does other pooled funds. Do you know if we've ever accessed those funds? We removed $150,000 during the course of the okay. pandemic, but that was for All right. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Hernan? Well, thank you. We, we've always, well, we've been more recently at 20% anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So what caused uh, the $120,000 to put it back at 20%? Um, the increase in the budget amount, so it's 20% of the budget. So as the budget grows, of the we need to. Previous, that's 2022. Of 2021's budget. So. Um, as your budget grows, the 20% grows. Yes. So the, so the most recently adopted general fund budget, it's 20% of that. You can, you can either do the last year's budget or you can do, what is it, the average of the previous slide. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and those dollars, I don't know if that question was asked, are invested in a, a guaranteed fund, right? Sure. Public Act 20 is very specific about the types of investments that the treasurer can make. They're all very secure investments intended for public bodies. Okay. Any other questions? No, we're good? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> okay, motion carried. All right, moving on to item eight, are there any referrals? Unfinished business. Mr. Bikic? Michigan Association of Counties uh, Conference is the 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st of September. Port Huron. Uh, the 19th is elections. I'm sure there. I'm running for the MAC board. I appreciate your vote. <laughs> you might have to vote for me. I might have to think about it. <laughs> Shameless campaigning, sorry. But, uh, so if you can make it for part of it, uh, we have a new convention center right down by the Blue Water Bridge. Next to you of the river. Come on down. All right. Any new business? Is there a need for closed session? There is not, Madam Chair. Miscellaneous? I feel like I'm competing between Jamie and Vaughn now for these kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> Announcements. Aha. We had to come through. Harbor Girls Volleyball won the, uh, the county tournament again. They they, they do again, I think it's like third or fourth time in a row, isn't it? I think so. Wow. So that was exciting. And then football season's opened up too, so it's always good stuff. And if you if you do happen to go, make sure you pay attention during halftime because the people that play in the band put a lot of time they and do. energy in to those programs, uh, and they are amazing. Uh, I will tell you. I will tell you. Sometimes I stayed until the band played and then went, but that's just because my kids were in the band, and I absolutely <laughs> love the work that they do. So I'm also a band mom. Yeah, yep, I get it. Just amazing stuff. So, Madam Chair. Right? Oh, so I'm sorry. Oh, you got oh, away. Sorry. The Wolves got a great band too, and the Bobcats. <laughs> You ever hear John Glenn's band? They can play. So, you know, we want to promote all kids. Great. Well, okay, I didn't say Western's band. Oh, no, Western, I'm sorry, too. <laughs> that the band, Mom. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, Mary. <laughs> but you're right. We'll all... get back and let everybody know, like, in October, I believe they have the big band uh, 
at uh, and Midland High. And Midland has that's something to go see if you got some time. And it's not too cold. Honestly, last year it was too cold. I did not. <laughs> my, my kids were no longer the band, so I did not. <laughs> that's kind of when it doesn't become mandatory anymore. Yes. Oh, yes. I get it. So, Madam Chair. Yes. As I was about to say, <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> the meeting has ended. So,